good morning i am dr manju from chennai tamil nadu practicing as an obstetrician in a private hospital i am a director of janani nursing home i welcome you all to the ima cgp and today i have a presentation on antenatal examination and overview antenatal care is a systematic supervision of a woman during pregnancy the goals of antenatal examination is reduction of the maternal and the fetal mortality and morbidity with reduction of the neonatal and perinatal complications a safe motherhood policy involves a good preconceptional evaluation along with a careful systematic assessment and follow up of a pregnant mother the objective of a good antenatal care is to prevent and identify maternal or fetal problems that can adversely affect pregnancy outcome to educate the mother about pregnancy labor and delivery with parenting as well as the ways by which she can improve her health and it's also done to promote adequate psychological support from her partner family and caregivers a good antenatal care is a good preconceptional evaluation and a systematic care which leads to a good outcome of that pregnancy what is preconceptional care couples who plan for conception engage the services of an obstetrician several months before conception this is essential in order to improve the outcome of pregnancy however planned pregnancies always have a better outcome than an unplanned one preconceptional care improves the outcome of pregnancy both for the mother and the baby there is a benefit of early identification of potential problems and medical treatment before pregnancy is apparent preconceptional care advocates cessation of smoking abstinence from alcohol and weight reduction in order to prevent any pregnancy related complications because they have a poor outcome it also advocates daily folic acid supplementation for all to be mothers medical problems like heart disease diabetes and epilepsy are to be optimized with a specialist consultation at least 3 to 6 months before conception ace inhibitors and the a2 receptor antagonist along with thiazide diur diuretics are to be avoided especially in hypertensive mothers who are already on these medications benzodiazepines to be avoided in patients with depression who are already on such a drug warfarin is to be replaced by heparin in those patients who are on warfarin especially in cases of deep vein thrombosis and heart diseases carrier screening for sickle cell anemia and thalassemia is advocated in ethnic group especially the punjabi sindhi and the gujarati group of population those with a positive family history of cystic fibrosis are to be handled and they have to be taken care of carrier screening is done for sickle cell anemia and thalassemia patients especially in ethnic group uh, belonging to the sindhi punjabi as well as the gujarati group of communities family history where there is a positive uh, cystic fibrosis patients the family history is recorded and those with a positive family history of cystic fibrosis those patients are given an extra care and approach for management during the subsequent management preconceptional care Uh, regarding the reproductive and the gynec history pre, um, uh, those with a previous uh, pregnancy outcome like recurrent abortions preterm labor intrauterine growth restriction pih pprom etc they are assessed thoroughly and they are treated even before they plan for their subsequent conception living environment is looked for especially for the diet where the diet has to be rich in iron calcium b complex low saturated fats folic acid of at least 400 micrograms per day in diabetic mellitus and uh, epilepsy the dosage is to be 1 mg per day and those with a previous history of neural tube defects it has to be at least 4 mg per day the optimization of the bmi is essential why because when the bmi is less than 20 there is diminished ovulation amenorrhea infertility and low birth weight those with a bmi of more than 25 there is amenorrhea infertility diabetes hypertension preeclampsia and also they land with operative deliveries regular exercises in moderation is adv advocated for example yoga where meditation and pranayama or breathing exercise is is essential and physical exercises especially stretching exercises and swimming does help 
How does it help? It relieves the pregnancy fatigue, sleep patterns and it relieves the constipation by mobilizing the bowels and it reduces the back pain and leg cramps. It also reduces the labor discomfort and it speeds up postpartum discomfort. Especially in diabetes mellitus, it increases the insulin sensitivity, it also reduces the insulin resistance and thereby reducing the need for insulin, thereby improving pregnancy outcome. Their babies are born with good weight, these babies tolerate stress of labor and delivery very well. To avoid uh, vitamin A and D is essential to prevent hypervitaminosis and coffee not more than 2 cups and if soda not more than 6 glasses. Domestic violence is looked into. Smoking and alcohol if continued increases chances of abruption, preeclampsia, preterm labor and re uh, reduction in the fertility with increase in the oocyte depletion and ectopic pregnancy. Use of paint, thinners and pesticides are avoided. Fertility review and optimization. The regulation of ovulation is looked into, signs of PCOS, proper medical examination, presence of HIV, syphilis and HPSAG detection in at-risk mothers is done. Periconceptional immunization of rubella and varicella is advocated. Aggressive treatment of toxoplasma, CMV and parvo B19 is done. Dental examination is mandatory. Those who are asthmatics, use of peak flow meter is done to assess the status of asthma and influenza vaccination is advocated. Autoimmune disorders, for example lupus, women are counseled at periods of inactive diseases. Advanced maternal age, it can present with infertility, chromosomal abnormality, chronic medical illness, adverse pregnancy outcomes, hence encourage not to delay pregnancy. A word about male periconceptional care. Smoking and alcohol to be curtailed at least three months prior to conception as it reduces fertility and it causes adverse neonatal outcome leading to low birth weight and fetal malformations because these lead to chromosomal as well as genetic derangements. In routine antenatal care, supervision is regular and periodic based on principles laid down according to the need of the individual which is from the beginning of pregnancy to the end of delivery. It detects potential complications of pregnancy and delivery. It promotes and educates good hygiene and rest. It provides family planning information. Management of sexually transmitted infections are looked into. Immunization is dealt with. HIV counseling and ART prophylaxis is looked for and malaria prophylaxis is given. For our convenience, pregnancy as a whole is divided into three trimesters, the first, second and the third, where it is from 0 to 12 weeks in the first trimester, uh, 13 to 28 weeks is the second trimester and beyond 28 weeks up to delivery of 40 weeks is the third trimester. WHO recommendation for antenatal care is a minimum of four visits for the mother. Apart from the booking visit, which is the first one, one visit is advocated around 28 weeks and then 34 to 36 weeks and at term. Ideal recommendations are one visit at every month after the booking visit up to 28 weeks and then one visit every 15 days till 36 weeks and then every week till delivery. The booking visit in the first trimester, a recording is done, the name is entered and age is entered. Age less than 19 teenage primaries and then more than 30 is 30 or 35 is recorded as elderly mothers. Now they can have uh, adverse uh, influence of the age during the course of pregnancy or labor or delivery. Ethnicity as we have already discussed, thalassemia, sickle cell, both trait and disorders are taken into account. Duration of marriage, if the conception is beyond two years of marriage, it needs to be carefully monitored. Mode of conception, yes, was it following an ovulation induction or was it following an ART therapy or other infertility procedures? Uh, they have to be entered as these mothers are to be closely monitored. Occupation, it gives a clue to the hazards, fatigue, rest, exposure to drugs, chemicals or radiation. Husband's socio-economic condition influences the uh, relation of the anemia, toxemia and the need for family planning. Complaints are recorded, mode of onset, progress, duration, the sleep habits, appetite, bowel and micturition habits are made an entry. Obstetric history, details of every previous event is chronologically recorded. The events in pregnancy including abortions are entered, uh, taking into account the labor events, the mode of delivery, the puerperium, 
outcome of every pregnancy the sex of the baby weight condition of condition at birth and nicu admission if re uh, required rh immunization whether given or not breast feeding duration health of the babies the last issue interval between pregnancies and contraception if any past medical and surgical history is made an entry and a family history of hypertension diabetes tuberculosis blood dyscrasias and other disorders of the living children is made an entry now what is the examination we do on the booking visit the belt the nourishment and the height is made an entry the height if less than 40, 145 cm is recorded why because they can have uh, an operative delivery at the uh, at term weight and accurate assessment is essential for estimating the bmi and for monitoring the subsequent weight gain pallor is looked at at the palpebral conjunctiva the dorsum of the tongue and the nail beds examination of the tongue teeth gum and tonsils is made and neck is examined for veins thyroid and lymph nodes pedal edema is examined bilaterally over medial malleolus and anterior surface in the lower one third of the tibia and varicosities are looked for blood pressure is monitored the diastolic is measured as the muffling fourth korotkov sounds which is taken into account breasts are examined for changes of pregnancy the nipples skin over the areola is looked for thyroid is examined clinically for enlargement and a per abdomen examination is done for tone of muscles presence of scars hernia or any other masses per speculum and per vaginal examination is not done as a routine coming to the biochemical investigations urine examination is done and the urine has to be a clean catch midstream specimen and it is looked for pustules albumin sugar and deposit blood is examined for hemoglobin grouping rh sugars sts hiv and hvsag hiv examination is done after couple counseling and a positive test means though the virus is present treatment can delay the onset of uh, the disease and a vertical transmission during pregnancy and labor is around 15 to 40% and then anti retroviral therapy does reduce it confidentiality has to be maintained 100% and a window period is kept in mind in negative cases ultrasound is done for dating of pregnancy where a confirmation of intrauterine pregnancy is done viability is looked for and ruling out multiple pregnancy and if it is a multiple pregnancy whether it is a twin gestation or a higher order gestation if so the chorionicity and the amniocity has to be marked molar pregnancy if present has to be reported immediately to the physician and also ectopic pregnancies adnexe and the pod also are looked into during an ultrasound umbilical cord blood banking and stem cell storage is discussed even during the first visit subsequent visits till the 28 weeks it is every 4 weeks from the booking visit complaints are asked for and quickening also is asked for which is roughly around 16 to 22 weeks of gestation weight blood pressure and pallor and edema is looked for and it is done identify uh, now this is done to identify at the earliest anemia intrauterine growth restriction preeclampsia and hydramnios urine is examined on a routine at every visit and uh, blood is examined for hemoglobin and sugars and sugars around 24 weeks a gtt is done and in, uh, indirect coombs test is done around 28 weeks in rh negative mothers folates are to be administered continuously in thalassemia patients to avoid anemia calcium supplementation is done from the 12th week onwards and a dose of 1200 mg is given per day iron is started around 28th week and it is between 60 to 100 mg every day for the for at least 100 minimum days deworming is done in anemic mothers before iron supplementation a per abdomen examination a uh, height of the fundus is measured especially after 20 weeks a symphysio uh, fundal height measurement is taken and the measurement is started from the fundus which is a mooring point and then the second measurement is taken at the level of the pubic symphysis and this is done in centimeters roughly the measurement is the symphysio fundal height increases by 1 cm per week external bellotment is looked for and a fetal movement and the fh recording is done uh, depending on the instrument or the gadget whether it is a fetoscope or a fetal doppler the fh can be heard fetal doppler has an advantage that even the mother can listen to her baby's heartbeat ultrasound done between 11 to 13 weeks which is uh right now essential in the determination of the presence or absence of nasal bone or an nuchal cord thickness nuchal translucency thickness and ductus venosus flow which is looked for the biochemical markers along with these 
ultrasonographic markers are done for an aneuploidy screening especially trisomy 21 18 13 as well as neural tube defects at 24 weeks the scan is an anomaly scan first dose of dt or the uh, tetanus and diphtheria is given around 16 weeks of gestation and injection anti d is given at 28 weeks in the rh negative mothers the antenatal checkup after 28 weeks which is the third trimester now the visits are once per two weeks till 36 weeks how is it done again complaints are asked for uh, patient is looked for anemia hypertension and diabetes if problems are there it is rectified and the weight pallor edema and blood pressure is recorded as a routine and on a per abdomen examination the lie presentation position growth like a relation of the head to the pelvic brim is assessed and girth of the abdomen is, take, uh, is uh, recorded from 30 weeks onwards roughly it is 2 cm per week and this is done till term and at term the measurements are around 95 to 100 centimeters between 28 to 34 weeks a gtt is done and an indirect combs test is done for rh isoimmunization and a gba screening is done in the previous preterm or the pprom patients the second dose of injection td vac is given after 28 weeks the ultrasound is done for interval growth assessment the presentation like a placental extent and maturity interval growth chart predicts low birth weight and iugr at an earlier date after 36 weeks the visit is every week till delivery a routine evaluation of the weight blood pressure pallor pedal edema is looked for including a per abdomen examination a per vaginal examination is done in all primaries after 37 weeks for pelvic assessment or prior to induction no vaginal examination is done in uh, active bleeding ultrasound is done for lie presentation, attitude, gestational age and to rule out macrosomia and intrauterine growth restriction, lica status, placental maturity and Doppler in indicated cases. The plan for delivery is discussed, the timing of admission, the mode and place of delivery, transportation, finances and family planning issues are looked into. Instructions regarding signs and uh, symptoms of labor are discussed with the patient and the attenders. Institutional uh, delivery is advocated in all the high-risk mothers. Now, high-risk mothers are all primaries, grand multis, previous assisted deliveries, teenage mothers, elderly, um, elderly mothers, as well as those with the previous history of poor obstetric outcome or previous operative deliveries and uh, those with positive uh, HIV infection and then HBSAG mothers. The care given during pregnancy is for diet, it has to be very light, nutritious, easily digestible and rich in protein, minerals and vitamins. 150 kilocalories or more in the first trimester, 350 kilo, 50 kilocalories subsequently with protein, with a protein of 6 gram per day, folic acid of 400 microgra uh, microgram per day is a uh, is warranted. Supplementary nourishment involving calcium up to 1200 milligram per day and iron of about 60 to 100 milligram per day is advocated. Activities, they are advised to continue routine activities throughout pregnancy in uncomplicated cases and relaxation is advised when tired. They are advised to avoid strenuous work in the first trimester and in the last six weeks. Rest is necessary for two hours in the daytime and eight hours at night. Bubbles, tendency for constipation, it leads to backache and abdominal discomfort. This can be taken care with diet, increased uh, fluids, vegetables and milk. Care during pregnancy, bath is advised every day and dress code is, uh, they are advised to wear loose and comfortable dresses and they should avoid wearing high heeled footwear. Dentist consultation is obtained as a rout, uh, routine and extraction and filling is advised uh, in second trimester only. Breasts are examined. If nipples are retracted or cracked, they are attended accordingly. Travel, they, they are advised to avoid jerky travels especially during the first week as well as the last six weeks. Second trimester is safe for traveling by train, bus or air up to 36 weeks. They are advised walking and drinking during travel, calf muscle exercise and stockings can be worn if travel is more than 36 hours. Exercise, isometric exercises done 30 minutes per day definitely improves the outcome. Swimming is permissible and prolonged standing and strenuous exercises are to be avoided. The advantages being there is a reduction in the weight gain, increase in the mood, increase in sleep patterns and there is more rapid weight gain after pregnancy. It improves faster labor, 
less need for induction, less likely for epidural and with fewer operative births. Exercise doesn't increase the risk of miscarriage. Smoking leads to abortion and small for dead babies. Alcohol leads to anomalies and intrauterine growth restriction. Coitus to be avoided in the first six weeks for fear of infection and abortion and in the last six weeks for fear of infection and preterm labor. Vaccination injection TDVAC is mandatory two doses after 14 to 16 weeks at an interval of six weeks. ARV or the anti-rabies vaccine is given the same as in non-pregnant. Cholera is given only during epidemics and yellow fever when traveling to endemic zones. Treatment of ailments, minor ailments can be taken care of just like a routine keeping in mind the teratogenic medications. The hospitalization is advised if there are regular crampy pains or altered fetal movements or draining or a bleeding per vagina. Acidity and heartburn is dealt with by use of antacids, a semi-reclined position and restriction of fatty foods. Leg cramps is due to the deficiency of diffusible calcium and increase in phosphate and hence calcium supplementation is advocated along with massaging or with vitamin E capsules. Varicose veins, it can get aggravated during later months of pregnancy so that's best managed with elastocrep bandage and limb elevation. Hemorrhoids increases uh, during pregnancy and they can be either replaced and the treatment is by increasing the fiber diet and additional water intake and uh, there is uh, use of laxatives and local HC injection also helps. No surgery is indicated during pregnancy. In conclusion, antenatal care is essential part of modern health care and is every woman's right. Thank you.